Life is good. Somebody wants something built, you build it. They want something else built, you build it. They want something else built, you build it. But what if one day, they want something destroyed? Time to show what the inventor is made of. The inventor is a fighter that uses strange inventions to convert their intelligence into martial prowess. They use martial weapons, medium armor, and their key attribute is intelligence, despite not using magic. But there are a lot of classes that don't use magic, so then what is the point of an inventor? In Pathfinder, there are six attributes which represent the fundamental abilities of your character. Three represent physical abilities, while three represent mental abilities. Each of these attributes influences your effectiveness in certain areas. Your physical attributes help with melee and ranged attacks, so martial characters will tend to excel at them, whereas mental attributes help with spell casting, so spellcasters like clerics, wizards, and bards will excel at them. This has a side effect. Since your effectiveness and skills also depends on your attributes, it means martial characters will usually be good at skills that depend on physical attributes, like athletics or acrobatics, while skills like crafting, diplomacy, and survival will be left to the spellcasters, and martial characters may never get to be that good at things like crafting. That's where the inventor comes in. The inventor is a martial character, however they can use their intelligence and crafting skills to increase their damage in combat. That's because of the overdrive ability. It's a given that every inventor has several strange gizmos and contraptions at their person at any given moment. By running these abstract contraptions simultaneously and at maximum power, an inventor Inventor can make a crafting check against a standard DC for their level to add half their intelligence attribute to damage on strikes for one minute. The standard DC is on a table of level-based DCs, which is annoying to constantly look up, so make sure you write down the correct number every time you level up. Whether you fail or succeed, you can just try again and again until you succeed, or even critically succeed. If you critically succeed, you add your full intelligence to damage, but you can't do it again for one minute. Likewise, if you critically fail, there's a one minute cooldown, so if either critical Critical condition happens, you are stuck in that mode for probably the rest of the battle. Overdrive is just one of the three main tools in the hands of an inventor. The second is just being really good at crafting stuff. Crafting is simple if it's a common item, and an item level equal or less than your character level. Pay half the price of the thing you want to make and spend one day working on it. It's only one day because of the inventor feat which you get for free, then make a crafting check. If you succeed, then you pay the other half of the price of the item and obtain it. Or, you can convert any portion of that second half of of the price into days using the gold to day ratio and spend longer working on it for a lower price. The two numbers you need to know when you craft is the crafting DC of the item and the gold to day ratio. Your game master sets the crafting DC, but they will likely use the level based DC table using the item level as the level. You get the gold to day ratio from the income earned table using your level as the task level and your crafting proficiency. Since you're an inventor, your crafting proficiency will go up with your level so the chart is much less complicated than it seems. Like your overdrive check, just write this number down every time you level up. A critical success on your crafting check means you get to increase your level by one for the purposes of using this chart. This process might seem quite confusing, but once you figure out these numbers, it makes a lot more sense. Most standard adventuring gear is quite cheap, so it probably isn't worth spending a minimum of one day to craft it, unless you're in a survival situation like being stranded on a desert island. But some equipment is more neat. Not all towns and cities might have access to them, but if it's a common item, you can build it. Your spellcaster friends might appreciate wands or scrolls of specific spells. You can build it. You just need the spellcaster around to cast the spell as you make them. You and your other martial friends need runes, which give your weapons and armor strange abilities. You can build it. These items require the magical crafting feat which you can get at level 3 as a skill or general feat. If you get the alchemical crafting feat, a skill feat normally available at level 2, you can make elixirs, bombs, bombs and oils like the elixir of life or alchemist's fire. You can build it. Gadgets are consumable, uncommon devices like shield plating or gadget skates. Because most gadgets are uncommon, they require formulas and require two days minimum instead of one. Like all consumables, you can craft four at a time, but if you have the gadget specialist inventor class feat at level four, every day you get a certain number of temporary gadgets that you don't need to spend any money on. They fall apart by the end of the day, so you can't hoard them, but can use them for your adventures. You can build it. The third key tool at your disposal is your innovation, your masterpiece invention you work hardest at. You can choose one of three types. The armor innovation lets you choose between the power suit or subterfuge suit for strength or dexterity based inventors respectively. When you pick your innovation, you get an initial modification which gives you extra benefits. For example, the armor innovation has options like speed boosters, metallic reactants for acid and electricity damage resistance, or phlogistonic regulator for fire and cold damage resistance. The construct innovation gives you a little 
little robot buddy which is also affected by your overdrive ability. It works like most minions, it has no actions, but you can spend an action to command it and give it two actions. As an inventor, you can also spend two actions to command it and give it three actions. Your construct can have modifications like increased size, sensory array for extra senses, or projectile launcher. The third innovation type is weapon innovation that gets modifications to give it extra traits, like entangling form, dynamic weighting, or pacification tools. Your innovation starts with an initial modification at level 1 and then gets more powerful modifications at level 7 and 15. But the true power is the reconfigurability you get at level 3, which lets you spend one day in a crafting check to swap out modifications on your innovation. If you know you're fighting a fire-breathing dragon, you can give your armor phlogistonic regulator, for example, but if it's an electricity-breathing dragon, you could swap it for metallic reactants. Certain class feats also modify your innovation, and you can use this ability to swap them around as well. If you're ready to risk it all, you can make your innovation explode, which does fire damage, but has the unstable trait. That means you have to make a DC-17 flat check whenever you do it, and on a failure, you can't do any other unstable actions until you spend 10 minutes to fix it. Your innovation still works, you just can't make it explode again. In conclusion, the inventor is an intelligence-based marshal that uses overdrive to add intelligence to their damage. During downtime, their highly proficient crafting bonus grants them the ability to make lots of items. The inventor's subclass is based on their innovation, either armor, construct, or weapon, and they can reconfigure their innovation's modification at level 3. Inventor class feats will give them extra crafting abilities or new modifications to their innovation, which can also be reconfigured, and they can make their innovation explode at the risk of being unable to make it explode again until they have 10 minutes to spare.